imagine in the bottle that you have a goose. Now, how do you get the goose out of the bottle? You can't take the top off, you can't break the bottle, you can't shake it out. Anybody have an answer? Yes? It's not my goose and it's not my bottle. <laughs> <laughs> That's close. That's close. Yes? I imagine it out the same way I imagined it in. That's the answer. That's the answer. The answer is the goose was never in the bottle. You imagined the goose in the bottle. That's true. You see, and, and it's true with our own life. You know, we, we have these things that are imagined wrong with us and all of that. And it's just an imagination. The truth is you are whole, complete, and perfect. Yesterday and Friday night and all day yesterday, we had a wonderful seminar here at the church on relationships. It was marvelous. It really was. I've never seen so much energy put out by Billy and Mary Ruth. And so today, Billy's going to be speaking for us just kind of wrapping this all up and, and finishing up on his weekend. Billy, let's give you Billy Mitchell. Hold on, hold on. there's stuff on here. There you go, there you go Dr. <laughs> Aloha! Aloha! Mic is off. Your mic's off. Why? I don't know. What did I do? I have no idea. I didn't turn it off. Oh. <laughs> How are we now? Yeah. There you go. Thanks, you did hurt. Who was that hug? It seemed you heard me anyway. No, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> are we ready, Sammy? Yes, sir. Sammy worked so hard all weekend long. It's amazing what Sammy does here. It's kind of a quiet presence that infects the room in a positive way. Sammy's here early to set up to get ready for the sound. He takes care of the musicians. He records the talks. And then he burns a CD for us to have after the talk. If it fits us, we can pick one up. He just invests a ton of love into the center every week. Now, he does that anyway. He sets this wonderful stuff up. The words, that's not easily done. You actually have to go into a computer and type and put this stuff up on the screen. He does that during the week. And then on top of that, he blessed us by taking care of the sound for our seminar. The whole weekend, he's back in the back, participating quietly. He's got his manual. He's working through <laughs> stuff. He's having breakthroughs. Just quietly sitting in the back, breaking through, and recording the seminar for us. That's such a gift, isn't it? When someone knows what they love to do, Joe Man, and they do it, isn't it? Wouldn't it be nice if I knew exactly what I was supposed to be doing? God came down and said, hey, you need to do this. Would you argue? No, 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 I'm not going to do that. I want to do something. No, you would say, great, I'll do that. And it seems that Sammy has found his, and part of that is the service that he performs to us. Now then, there were three young ladies that lived together, sisters, 96, 94, and 92 years old. That's interesting in and of itself. The 96-year-old was upstairs in the bathroom, running a tub, getting ready to get in and take a bath. She sticks her toe in the water and says, was I getting in or getting out? <laughs> she yells it loud enough for the sisters to hear. The 94-year-old sister says, I don't know. Hold on. I'll come up and tell you. She runs up the stairs, gets about halfway up and says, was I going up or going down? <laughs> The younger sister, the 92-year-old, is in the kitchen. I will never have such a lousy memory as these girls do. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll be up in a minute to fix both of you as soon as I answer the door. <laughs> <laughs> that came up because... 
part of our seminar was the seven keys to unlocking your dream relationships. And the title of my talk today is, Where Are My Keys? And I thought memory was a great place to go with that. <laughs> I was talking with a friend of mine just the other day, and he says, Oh, man, I'm losing my memory. And I said, Well, possibly, but maybe not. Maybe what you're doing is just noticing it more. Because when I lost my keys at 30, all I did was run around and look for my keys. If I lose my keys at 54, oh my God, my memory's going, where are the keys? <laughs> and really, the only difference is what I think of what happened. Shakespeare said that there is no right, there is no wrong. It's our thinking that makes it so. And ultimately, our thinking does a lot for us. Isn't that wonderful when I'm thinking good thoughts about myself? I feel better. When I think good thoughts about you, I feel better. And then there may have one of those little voices in the back that's not so positive. You're too fat. You're too short. You're too old. You're losing your memory. Those thoughts aren't so good. For me, mainly because they don't feel good. I like thoughts that feel good. I like feeling good. I love experiencing joy in life. I was talking with JoLynn prior to the service. She is fully involved, engaged, and identified with a non-for-profit that she's created that will transform the world. She may not have that clarity within her, but when she spoke the word of that, I knew it to be so, and at the moment of speaking that, I can feel the rush of spirit coming through from that experience of speaking with you. Our word is so powerful and so magnificent. Now then, back to memory. If it were possible to forget the past, we could potentially live only in today. And how wonder-filled would that be? I don't know where I want it. Just use the other microphone, please. Use the other microphone, please? Yeah. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to lock me into a crazy location. That's just not going to work. Okay. Is that the old mic or the new mic you have on? That's the old mic. Okay. The battery's gone dead, I suspect. Work. No, we put in a new battery today. Well, let's see. Are we working now? Work. You turned it off. Okay. That kind of takes the real rush out of that thought, did not it? It just blew that completely. Let's try it one more time. If it were possible to forget the past, we could potentially live only in today. And how wonder-filled would that be? Wouldn't have any of the old stuff. Wouldn't have any considerations of not being good enough. My mama didn't treat me just right. My daddy wasn't there. I didn't measure up in school. You know they all laughed at me when I said that thing. Wouldn't have any of that. Wouldn't have any of those things thoughts, those words that were so potentially hurtful at the time they came on. And I could, I could literally be right here, right now, and everything would be brand new. Callie, our resident short child, we have other children in the room, but they've grown in size and stature including myself and Randy. A resident short child, have you seen how bright she is? When something new comes into her world, it's like, wow! Oh, that I could be that excited. That excited. That energized. That clear that everything is so interesting. So new and exciting. Where are my keys? 
Have you guys spent much time looking for keys? <laughs> Oscar Wilde said that every man spends 10 to 15 minutes a day looking for his keys. Mm -hmm. I have one place that I put them now. Mm -hmm. And we know exactly where it is. And when they're not there, I put them someplace else and then I have to figure it out. <laughs> every time. One of the things that we talked about in the workshop were the keys to self-discovery. And the fact for me, and you all don't have to buy this, but it is my experience that where the key is, is within each of us. My keys are rarely found in someone else's pocket. <laughs> I have yet to find them in someone else's purse, aside maybe from Mary Ruth. <laughs> my keys are always where I put them, and where I know my keys are is right here, within me. And for me, your keys are within you. The sad part is that we keep looking outside. There's got to be a place where the keys are, because... In many cases, my life's not working. And somebody's probably locked a door, and if I could just open that door, then I could get into that perfect life that I, that I have in my mind, of how life is supposed to be, or that one that I had visioned when I grew up. When I was a young pup, and I'm looking at my life, my future existence, it was going to be this way. And I look for that, and it must be out there somewhere, as opposed to the only place that it really could be, which is within me. Now, if you allow that the key is within each of us, if you allow yourself to actually have the key to the kingdom, then the only one that can unlock that door has got to be me, has got to be you. That I am within you has the key, and I have to look within them, within myself, to discover it. And then, once I have the key, I have the opportunity to unlock the door and enter into whatever that is that it seems to be out there somewhere. Ernest Holmes, your word is all-powerful. Your consciousness is one with omnipotence. Your thought is infinite. Your destiny is eternal. And your home is everlasting heaven. Keys to the kingdom. Realize the truth. I am living in a perfect universe. It always was perfect and always will be perfect. But no, 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 it's not. If it were perfect, I would have this. If it were perfect, I would have that perfect relationship. If it were perfect, she would treat me the way I expect to be treated. No, no. If it were perfect, then I would be here at this time in my life. If it were perfect, I would be on the mountaintop as I floated down the street on my spiritual path. Now, perfection, interestingly enough, is the state of anything being exactly what it is. Ernest talks about wherever we, whenever we start in our realization, we have to start where we are. But the problem, we look at it and say, oh, where I am is not right. It's not enough. It's not. It's, it's lacking. No. Here it says it's perfect. If there's a perfect universe, always was perfect, always will be perfect, and I'm in the universe, then I must also be that. There's nothing to fix or repair about me. 
There's nothing to fix or repair about you. You aren't perfect. And the great thing is, you are magnificent. I love seeing the light shine in people's faces. That oneness that comes when we look eye to eye and soul to soul, that magnificent light of love, that's who we are. Perfect. But I, no, no, I'm not tall enough. No, 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 I don't, I didn't study that, and I don't have that letter degree. None of that is anything that matters. What matters is, in the whole of it, our perfection shines through. Regardless of what we think about it at times, if we allow our truth, our perfection shines through. From the I Am Discourse by St. Germain, there is only one thing in this universe that can surround you with limitation, and that is accepting outer appearance instead of the mighty, active presence of God in you. Of myself I am nothing, it's the Father within which doeth the works. That wasn't only for Jesus. That was for everybody. That was for all of us. That was a statement said to have been purported and, and stated by Jesus. That was a statement of our truth. That magnificent God light within us is where the power generates from. But we get stuck in this physical aspect and the illusion of time. Because if I think of something and it doesn't instantly manifest, well then my thoughts don't count. If I could, if I, if my thoughts really manifested stuff, if they really mattered, then when I thought of something, I would instantly have a pink elephant in the back of the room. Thank God that doesn't happen. Regardless of the pink elephant. But some of the thoughts that I have thought to have that instantly manifest would be scary. So wonderfully enough, we've created this illusion of time that says it takes time from thought, action to manifest. That way we're able to learn how to watch our thoughts and to focus those thoughts on what we really want as opposed to the fleeting thought of what we think we want. But that power is there. That immense power of God within us, that gift, that true gift, that what I think about, I bring about. Earl Nightingale, if I've got them written down here, but I don't think I do. Let's see. Earl Nightingale, The Strangest Secret. Earl Nightingale was a, a magnificent author, writer, speaker, a leader in creating the personal development industry. And for me, the personal enlightenment industry and he said the strangest secret is that what we become that we become what we think about most of the time and the sad thing is that many of us most of the time think about what we don't want as opposed to what we want I don't want to be old I don't want to be too short I don't want to be too fat I don't want to be too thin I don't want to be broke Yeah. And that, that if we become what we think about most, and we think about what we don't want, then it would seem that what I have must be what I want, because that's what I continue to think about. And the sad thing is that I have it now, and I'm not happy with it. As opposed to thinking what we really want, not what we don't want, thinking what we really want, and then having that be what happens, and then being in the joy of actually having, being, and doing what we want to do, be, and have. 
If what we think about, we bring about, and what we think about is not what we want, it's time to change what we think about and focus on what we want. And the problem is that the keys aren't in somebody else's purse to that vehicle to get you going. And they're not in the latest book or the PhD. They're actually right inside in this center. And interestingly enough, it's, for me, a heart center. Because the mind, universal or within my physical presence, literally encases this whole physical presence. And that part of my mind that handles the keys to the kingdom is right here in the heart where love resides, right here in the heart where love resides. Life is a mirror and will reflect back to the thinker what he thinks into it, <coughs> says Ernest. Isn't that frightening? Were you happy the last time you looked in the mirror? I mean, were you? Were you happy? Excellent. Perfect. Because you're beautiful. You're magnificent. And if I can accept you as beautiful, perfect, and magnificent, then you ought to also. Because who should really love you the most? You. Oh, no, no, that's self-centered. No, that's all ego. I love me. No, that's the way God meant it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Not love your neighbor the way they love you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love yourself. Accept your perfection, your magnificent. Love yourself. And with that, I that with that. My love flows out. We spoke about this a bit yesterday. Of where love comes from. Because many of us look outside to be loved. The perfect relationship or the perfect experience. Whether that's a job or whatever it is. We look outside to be accepted. And in that, ultimately, we look outside to be loved. As if love comes from there to me. And that's not where it comes from. It comes from within out. Did you all, did any of you ever have a teddy bear growing up? Yep. I did. I had one for years, a little bitty guy. His name was Teddy, interestingly enough. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't very creative at that point in life. <laughs> well, Teddy, if I got upset, it was into the bedroom hugging Teddy, getting my love. And realizing now, the only love that Teddy ever had was the love that I gave Teddy. Although I may have gone there to feel love, the sad thing is that where I needed to go was right inside. The great thing is, Teddy got a ton of love. <laughs> when you've said all the bad things and all the good things you haven't been saying, you will find that what you've really been withholding is, I love you. In that battle that we may get into with a loved one or a loved one that's a friend, we may get into a verbal discussion. It may become heated. <coughs> Anger may ensue. And the sad thing is that <coughs> the last thing we're thinking about is I love you. And the real deal about that is, I love you. Otherwise, I wouldn't mess around being near you. 
and yet we battle. And we confuse, we confuse our anger, fear, and nonsense with other things, and we call it other things, and then we may get a divorce, or we may not be friends anymore, and we may move on to other things, and we may do it out of anger or fear or whatever we call it, and the bottom line is, I love you, I love you, I love you, and that's why I'm here. And the other stuff is nonsense. It does keep it interesting, though, doesn't it? I know that you know I love you. What I want you to know is that I know you love me. Oh, no, I don't. I don't even know him. <laughs> How could I love him? Come on. The reason I know that is because you are love. And who you are flows out whether you think you can stop it, slow it down, change it, or not. It just continues to flow out. And in that, I know that you love me. Regardless of circumstances, situations, and stuff that's going on. And what a world would it be if I could forget the past and be just in today. All the baggage gone and just so excited because everything's brand new and all I am is love. And I experience you as love. By the way, that has nothing to do with sex. Don't, don't be confused. Many people are. The, 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 the two may go together in an, in an experience, but they're not one and the same, necessarily. One can thrive fully without the other. The student should watch in every way for habits and break the habit. He should not have to be told he must look within herself and uproot them, whatever is not perfect. Yeah, that kind of flies in the face of what Ernest said about everything being perfect already. This brings freedom not possible in any other way. That goes back to those habits of thought that may not be the most loving thoughts about myself or you. See, those are habits. And I don't mean to besmirch anything, but so are beliefs. Beliefs are merely thoughts that I think over and over and over again. And I've built a table of beliefs underneath those. And if my beliefs are interfering with my love and experiencing love of you, I need to review them uproot them and rebuild. And no one can do that but you. I can't do it for you, Doc, and he's magnificent. If you've ever sat one-on-one -on -one with this guy, you will be blown away if you have not experienced who Doc truly is. And he can't fix you. Number one, you're not broken. But number two, we have to do the work. We went through a day and a half of intense pushing, prodding, opening, uncovering, discovering, discarding, to bring up ideas for each individual in the room to think about themselves and how they look at the world this previous weekend. Not that we had anything that was new, wonderful, enlightened. It was not. It were all basic keys for people to look within themselves to begin the unlock process. This is where it is. 
Don't disallow your magnificence, thinking the keys are anywhere else. Now, not to get this wrong, I may find that I've discovered a key within myself by looking through a book, or talking with Doc, or sitting down with Wayne and Jackie, and experiencing the truth of who they are, their magnificence, their light, their wonderment. And that may uncover one of my keys. Dr. Wayne Dyer was speaking, was writing in his, well, speaking to me, because I listened to books on tape, from Wishes Fulfilled. And he talked about this God spark within us. And he says that we, if we acknowledge the God spark, then what we do is we work to make that God spark bigger. Say if we're 150 pounds, that God spark is an ounce. Or maybe one one hundredth of an ounce, or one millionth of an ounce. It's just a little bitty spark. And then we work to build that spark up. We make it maybe the size of a pearl. And then a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Until we are experiencing the God self within us daily. I don't buy that one. It was a nice metaphor. I don't buy it. See, for me, there's no building that God spark. It is fully there. Already. Fully there. The problem is, for me, that I may have kicked a little dirt on it here and there. There may be, a, in fact, I may have had a flood or two with a, it just literally, and then all there is left is just a little bit of something. And then one day I kick it, and, oh, you know, that's a beautiful stone. I think I'll uncover that. And I kick away, kick away a little more of the mud, a little more of the dirt, and the next thing you know, I've, it, it's getting bigger. That God light within me is getting bigger. There's more of it. And all of a sudden, I keep digging. <laughs> And it turns out that it's not just a little pebble or even a rock or even a huge boulder. It's literally the mountain itself. It's literally who I am. It's who you are. Let nothing turn off your light. Let no lie, no false belief, no untruth. No one, no thing, block the love and light of who you truly are, a magnificent child of light and love. Namaste. Go within to that secret place of the Most High. Let us realize that there is just one life, and this life is God's life. This life is perfect. This life is whole. Because this life is that eternal experiencing and expressing through us. And in this awareness, we speak our word now for whatever it is that you might have. Our word for abundance. If you have a lack, just know that the presence of God is right there within you right now, speaking forth from you and for you. And there's a creative law that takes that word and produces it in our world. There is abundance for you. Every need is supplied. Every bill is met. And there is an abundance. I speak the word for health now. Maybe you're handling a health issue. Every cell of that body that you have. Or the person that you're speaking the word for. Every cell has an intelligence behind it. That intelligence created that cell. Of the millions of cells in your body, every one of them has an intelligence. That intelligence knows how to bring forth the perfection is what he was talking about. And we speak the word for perfect health now flowing through us. That that is not right is now erased, moving out of us. And that that is that remains is that perfection in which we are. God is all in all. 
Right now it can happen to you. Right now, just accept it. Accept it. And let's speak the word now also for our relationships. Maybe you're having something to do with your family, friends, neighbors, whatever it is. Let's just see love surrounding us. Perfect love within us. Love knows what to do and how to do it always. I am an expression of love. You are an expression of love. And we know that this divine love just surrounds everything and, and meets every need. Totally. And for this we give thanks. And we say, and so it is. Let's take our offering, hold it in our hands together as we bless it. The offertory is only... Lord, back here, let's say it together. Divine mind, through me, blesses and multiplies.